Good evening, everyone, and welcome to High Top Sports Network. We get ready for this Whippeal Class 3A Allegheny 7 Conference battle here at Valley Memorial Stadium between the Vikings and the visiting Freeport Yellow Jackets. I'm Jake DeLuca. Joined beside me is Brandon Schreckengoss as we get ready for this game. Freeport coming in at 1 and 3. As for uh, the home team, the Vikings, they're 0 and 5. Uh, Valley 0 and 2 in conference play. And uh, this just so happens to be Freeport's first conference game of the season. Uh, on the 17th, they had their game postponed. Probably won't happen at Apollo Ridge. Um, and then this past week, last week, Freeport was set to play their first uh, conference game. But uh, that game postponed as well against Derry area. Instead, Freeport played Sarah Catholic, a very strong team. And they held their own throughout the most part. Took a loss 14-3. Their lone victory, Freeport's that is, was the battle for the Pike uh, at Knock. And whenever they won 28 to 14. So Freeport looking to get back in the win column here. And Valley looking to uh, get their first win of the season. Brandon, it should be a pretty exciting matchup here tonight. Oh, I'm excited for it, Jake. I don't know about you, but, you know, I took a couple weeks off calling the game. I, I called my first one a couple weeks ago. I earned myself a T-shirt on for those who just followed Jake and me for whatever reason. Didn't have a t-shirt back then. Got one now. But, you know, that, that's the less important thing. The more important thing is what's on the field. Right now we have the band and the football team to be shortly. But this, uh, as you're saying, it's the first conference battle. And uh, we'll see how they do. It's just going to be a, a different atmosphere, you got to think. Yeah, Freeport's 1-3 and three record. Not to say that it doesn't matter, but... Uh... You know, none of those are conference games up to this point. Now finally actually getting to, well, they're going to play the national anthem, so we're going to pause real quick while that goes on. And a wonderful rendition of the national anthem by the Valley Vikings marching team, uh, marching band. I guess they're a team in their, in their own. Yeah, yeah. Mar marching team, marching band. I mean, I, th I think you get a letter for band, so it's a team. Yeah, we'll count it. I'll count it. Less than 11 minutes to go here until opening kickoff. Uh, but real quick, just to look at these two teams, I mentioned their records. Uh, but let's talk about how they got here. We'll start with the home team, the Valley Vikings. 0-5, uh, started off their season with a 41 to nothing loss at home to Hampton, followed it up with a home loss, 41-6 to to Highlands, traveled to Shadyside for a 39 or 36 to nine, excuse me, uh, loss there at Shadyside. Then they played North Catholic two weeks ago, a 49 to nothing loss. And then uh, this past week, uh, we were uh, rather, Valley was at Deer Lakes, lost six to nothing. Uh, so this Vikings team been shut out three times already this season. Uh, I'm sure they're hoping to avoid that tonight, Brandon. I tell you what, I, I think the big thing is, Jake, how many touchdowns have they got this season? 
Uh, looks like just two. Uh, I mean, for, from the stats that I found, uh, I could only see one touchdown. Um, they've, they've scored a, as a team a combined uh, 15 points uh, in five games. So, Well, I think whenever you go back to the locker room each week, each practice, each each day that you gather as a team, you got to talk about that offensive side. Uh, you got to figure out how to get the ball moving. Uh, they got themselves a, a big offensive line, and maybe it's time to run behind him. Yeah, you're uh, talking about the big sophomore, 6'4", 300 pounds. His name, Dominic Seibert. And, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a big sophomore. That's a big 15-year-old right there, Brandon. I mean, I tell you what, you got yourself a big mauler right there. You you run the boy behind him, and it doesn't matter who you hand the ball to. He should have a path. Now, the lone touchdown that I was able to find that this Valley team scored was uh, scored by Jeremiah Johnson, and uh, we got an updated look at the roster. Jeremiah Johnson out this game, so, uh, you know, the one guy that got you a score not going to be playing here tonight, so somebody else is going to have to step up in his place. And there are a few players out tonight for Valley, so they're, they're not coming in full strength, something you don't like to see, especially in the conference. And memorializing the 96 Valley Vikings team. Went undefeated that year, I believe I just overheard. So that's a special thing for all of those players coming back to their stomping grounds. The field may look a little different, but the memories, they're all the same. You know they want to see a win tonight to celebrate. Absolutely, and I'd say this team wants to give them the win. Uh, on a special night like this. Got about eight minutes to go until game time, Jake. Yeah, so while we talked a little bit about uh, the home team, Valley, uh, let's talk about the visitors, Freeport. They have a pretty balanced offense uh, between the run and the pass. Uh, they can do it both. They can do both of them, and they have a couple of guys that are capable of throwing the football. Uh, Freeport has seen, let's see here, Three, three players taking uh, some quarterback snaps, of course. Uh, the young gun, Sean Selinger, uh, he got in there for one game, went one for two for an interception and 16 yards. But uh, the three main people that you're going to see passing the ball, the main two really, uh, Garrett King and Ben Lane. Uh, Garrett King on this season is 12 for 33 for a buck 08. Uh, three touchdowns, one interception. And Ben Lane, who was the quarterback of this team last year, kind of a dual threat guy, really athletic, is Ben Lane. He's 11 for 19 with a touchdown and a pick for 163 yards. And then uh, Vinny Clark, usually the number one wide receiver option, he got some time at quarterback already in this season, and he went uh, five for eight for a touchdown and no interceptions and 108 yards as well. Uh, moving on, talking about the receivers, we mentioned Vinny Clark, nine catches, 116 yards. He scored a touchdown, and he's also the kicker for made PATs and also a make, uh, made field goal. Underneath him is uh, Jackson Riser on the receiving depth chart. He has eight catches for 94 yards. Uh, Sean Stevenson also a target here for King and Lane, whoever decides to be throwing the football at the time. Uh, so a lot of targets here, um, and of course Cole Charlton hasn't really had that breakout game yet, but he's a big body at tight end. Uh, I believe he's listed at six foot four, uh, maybe six three, but uh, he's a big guy that can go out and catch you some high point balls. So we'll see what uh, what Freeport decides to go with, and then of course you know we talked about the passing, but the rushing uh, that's led by uh, Ben Lane and Garrett King. Ben Lane carrying it at about a four and a half yard clip for 192 yards. Garrett King, the quarterback, has 109 yards. And uh, Zach Clark got some time uh, to run the ball as well. He has 39 on the season. So a lot of different players that can hurt you in some different ways here for Freeport. I mean, it seems more and more as time goes on, you have your quarterbacks running a lot more these days, have them doing a lot more, have a lot more responsibility. As you see in the background, uh, the bumblebee coming across the screen any second now. But the, uh, there he is. But the the main difference between you know 20, 30 years ago and today is 
used to line up, pound the ball with your halfback. Now you just kind of, uh, what do you want to do, quarterback? You want to throw it? You want to run it? You want to hand it off? You want to do a little option? Yeah, and that's one thing that uh, this Freeport team really excels at is, is running those kind of option plays. I mean, anytime you have a pair of players like uh, Garrett King and Ben Lane, a couple of good athletes out on the field, it can kind of cause some deception for the defense there, catch them off guard and uh, bust out some big runs that way. Uh, you know, Ben Lane, probably going to be one of the fastest guys out on the football field tonight. He generally is on Fridays. Uh, brings a lot of speed. So if Freeport's able to get him along the outside, break a couple of big runs, and then complement that run game with the uh, arm of Garrett King. Well, you know, we, we were talking about how Valley wants to win, wants to give these guys out on the field, on your screen, something to celebrate. You know, Freeport, they're on the opposite end. They're looking at the 49s to nothing. They're thinking, let's get out of here early. Let's put up 35 points right away and get that clock a running. Yeah, Freeport would... I would imagine they would love nothing more than to get a big win to start their section uh, section season. Um, but talking about those Freeport Yellow Jackets, uh, let's see how they got to their one and three record. They played Armstrong in week zero and fell 48 to 14 behind the potent offense of the Riverhawks led by Caden Olson. Uh, then they followed that up week one at Knock Battle for the Pike. They won that 28 to 14, their lone win so far this season. And then they played one of the top teams in the state in Avonworth, took a 21 to seven loss, but able to keep up with a very talented Avonworth team. Uh, same can be said about their opponent last week, Sarah Catholic, another powerhouse in the PIAA, uh, just a 14 to three loss. I'm sure they would have liked to get a touchdown on the board, but being able to hang with those two teams, their last two opponents, Avonworth and Sarah Catholic says a lot about the uh, competitive spirit of this Freeport team and their I said I think it says a lot about their ability you know you never want to lose but whenever you're going up against quality opponents uh, teams that are in a lot of people's eyes top five in the state um, you know to be able to hang in with them and not not take a big loss uh, that, that I think that speaks volumes here to this Freeport team and now as they start section play they got Valley here today obviously as we're at the Valley Memorial Stadium in New Kensington. But uh, the rest of the way out, just section opponents at Valley today, East Allegheny the week after that, then at Burl the following, North Catholic after that, and then closing out their season at Deer Lakes. And I'm not sure if they're going to be able to uh, run back that Dairy Area game that got postponed. Um, that is a section game. So I guess it all depends really on whether or not they can find the time. I mean, we still have some of the uh, global issues going on. It's unfortunate, but we want to, we, we obviously want to see that game completed. We don't want any missing games off the schedule. Yeah, and that could be a game, you know, it doesn't count as a win or a loss on your record, but had you have played that game, uh, I mean, a, a win could be the difference in, in that game. And, uh, you know, a lot of people going into that game probably had uh, Freeport as a favorite over Derry. Um, but, you know, a win there could mean the difference between a uh, four, number four in your conference and number three could be the difference between a playoff, game, a playoff series and uh, no playoffs at all. So uh, not only that, but some of these kids are seniors. They want to play as many games as they can before their careers in high school come to an end. Yeah, absolutely. Notable seniors on the team, Cole Charlton, uh, Vinnie Clark, Garrett King, just to name a few for this Freeport team. Uh, they got a lot of seniors on this, uh, on this team here for Freeport as they take the field. The visitors going over to their side of the stands, getting the crowd pumped up. In Freeport, not too much, not too long of a drive for them to get here to Valley. Uh, the fans on the Freeport side certainly came out to travel. There's a good bit of them in the stands opposite of us as the Valley Vikings now take the field. I was informed before this, one of the legendary coach here for the Valley Vikings, people call him Muzzy. This is going to be his last year coaching. So uh, he's trying to get that number one spot in the uh, Whippeal for wins, but 
Uh, as it stands now, Valley Vikings winless, so that might be a little bit tough to accomplish this year. Uh, but mean, just a legendary guy. You might not get it, but at the very least, you got a good run. I mean, you, like you said, legendary. Absolutely. Now we're just moments away from kickoff. They already got the coin toss out of the way earlier. So I didn't quite see who uh, won the coin toss, who's going to get the ball first here. But, well, no, now they're doing it. I thought um, they did it earlier. <laughs> they, I thought they did it earlier. I watched them meet in the middle and talk. And uh, they were wearing different warm-ups. It's, it's October. It's the first day of October. So the warm-ups were all pink. I couldn't tell which team was team, which team, if I'm being honest. The captain's out there now trying to see the numbers there. We have uh, Tyree Swindler, uh, Zaire Warren, uh, Daria Wolf, and Micah Hughes for the Vikings. Trying to see the captains on the other side for Freeport. Looks like we have Ben Lane, Logan Dredajewski. Jen Dredajewski. Jen Dredajewski. Oh, that's going to be a name. <laughs> that's going to be a name tonight. Uh, then we have Aiden Lindsay. And if the last one could just turn a little bit, Jackson Riser. Those are your captains for these two teams here tonight. They'll head back to their respective sidelines, and we will get this one underway very soon. This Allegheny seven conference matchup here. All the refs are going to huddle up in the middle of the field. Go team. Hey, refs got to huddle too, you know. <laughs> it's definitely some... Uh, Refereeing is a tough job, no matter what the sport. There's always got to be an open discussion between all the officials, making sure they're on the same page. They look like they are now. Got to do them pre-game warm-ups, you know, throw the flag up in the air. That's right. Work out that, uh, practice that flag-throwing arm. You can't see it. I'm behind the camera. Just throw my arm up and down. <laughs> you just got to trust. Well, if anybody needs a flag thrown, I think Brandon will... Be the man for the job. <laughs> I'm also applying all coaching positions using my Madden playbook. <laughs> and it looks like Freeport will kick the ball off first here in this matchup. So they'll get the ball at halftime or after halftime, excuse me. Set to kick it off for Freeport is Vinny Clark. Back deep to return it. Looks like uh, Zaire Warren and uh, Darnell coasting we were talking about how valley needs to get their offense going they're going to get a shot to do that at the very beginning of this game we'll see what they come up with here as clark set to kick this one away and there's the whistle Clark approaches the ball, and we are underway. This kick going deep. It'll be received there by Warren. He'll cut it up the middle of the field, cutting it to the near sideline, and then being taken down right around the 25-yard line. There was Zaire Warren. So we said that uh, we mentioned earlier in the pregame that uh, this Vikings team has a number of players out. Jeremiah Johnson won, Jion Williams, Kyron Beasley, uh, Sam Lewis, Ryan Knapp are all the players inactive for this game. So Vikings yeah, will be shorthanded. That could certainly affect team chemistry if those are who they're used to having out on the field. In at quarterback under center there is uh, Tristan Goodwin. He'll hand it off. That'll get some positive yards there on first down nearly a five yard gain it'll set him up with a second and about five yards you don't see too many kids go under center these days jake it's kind of a heartwarming sight to see yeah a lot of spread a lot of shotgun formations for a lot of teams that we've covered so far this season but uh, a throwback here with the vikings going under center goodwin once again under center i guess nice formation i guess whenever you have a coach as tenured as muzzy He's a little old school. Let's get another handoff here. And another short gain. Trying to see who got the carry that time. Looks to be 
Number uh, six, I believe. Yeah, that would be uh, Dallas Price, the fullback, getting some work. We don't see a lot of fullbacks these days either. No, old school football here at Valley. Sticking true to the Viking name. Not like the Minnesota Vikings, but like, you know. Vikings historically, not? Yes, historically. <laughs> Under center once again, good win. Waits for the snap. Gets it. Another handoff up the middle, and that one will be stuffed immediately. So a quick three and out here for the Vikings offense. We'll see what they elect to do. They're going to bring out the punt team. Normally, whenever you're, uh, you have a, a zero in the win column, you're, you're in third down your first drive, and you're trying to figure out what you need to do to get momentum. I formation run up the middle is not top of my playbook. <laughs> Back deep to return is Clark and also Ben Lane. Lane will get the ball. He'll take it up across the 45. He has a lane across the 50 to the 40. He runs out of offensive drive of the game. Ben Lane with a lane. Meant to be. I'm, I'm here for the punch lines, really. So Freeport will line up first and 10. Ball spotted on the 33-yard line. I think with Freeport, we're going to see a little bit of a newer system. A little not eye formation. Here's the spread we were talking about. Ben Lane getting the nod here at quarterback tonight. Split out wide. Garrett King at the bottom of your screen. He started the season as the quarterback. And last year, Ben Lane, uh, as a sophomore, really took the whip wheel by storm in the games that they were able to play. Freeport, of course, having a lot of cancellations last yeah. year. Uh, but when Lane was playing, it was must-watch uh, must watch TV, as the kids say. But that first uh, play will go backwards uh, after the flag is thrown. So yeah, false start, Larry. Set him up with a first and 15. Ball placed on the Valley 18-yard 18, 18 line. I'm sure Freeport would like that. 38-yard yeah, yeah. line. Well, if you're Freeport, you, you just shut them down, three and out. You had a nice punt return. A false start is one way to kill momentum. First and 15, Lane waiting for the snap, gets it. He's going to scramble out to the near side of your screen. Throws a pass that time looking for Cole Charlton, but just a little overthrown there for his big Viking defense, ready to get after it out there. Freeport still in the huddle. They break, and we'll head to the line of scrimmage here. Lane in the pistol here, spotted at. It looked like uh, Valley almost got a hand on it, Larry Jake. Yeah, that was close. It kind of it might have been tipped there. That was a very low angled punt uh, by Clark. Kind of had some weird spin to it as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if somebody got a fingertip on that one. But, yeah. you know, that's about as good of a punt you can get, even though it, it didn't look the prettiest. Uh, still gets your team on defense. Yeah, it got you where you wanted. And I guess that's the end result. So that'll bring us to now a fourth, or rather first and ten for Valley. Handoff goes up the middle again. He's able to shake off one tackler. The pile continues to move forward. And a short game on the play. Well, actually, that's a pretty decent chunk, it looks like. Hard to see from the angle here. It really is. I think he got maybe five, six yards in. Potentially seven the way they're moving. Yeah, it looks like a pickup of six here. That'll set us up with a second down and four yards to go here for the Vikings. Seven and a half minutes to go here in quarter number one. We're still scoreless here. About five minutes off the clock here in the first. Two wide receivers split out wide to the bottom of your screen. Good win. The quarterback. He fakes the handoff. He's going to try to roll out there, but he gets smothered and sacked on the play. Looks like Andrew Sullivan able to get the sack there. And that'll set him back to about the original line of scrimmage. Call it third down and nine. So back against their own goal once again is Valley. Freeport trying to force another three and out. 
Report made. Valley go three and out in their first we got possession. Flag on the field. Or uh, yeah, it's going to be an illegal substitution on Valley, and they don't have much distance to give up here. No, that'll put them at about the two and a half yard line. This is a consider going up the middle and giving your punter a little breathing room play here. Freeport just sends the house here on this play, try and get them in their own end zone. I wouldn't blame them. Shotgun, though. Yeah, give Goodwin a little more time to see the play. He drops back, looks on the far side of the screen, and misses his target intended on the play there was Micah Hughes. And that'll be another three and out here for Valley, and this is where it gets interesting because you got a punt in your end zone now. Everything amplified whenever you're that close to your own goal line. And not only that, they're going to be bringing people. So you got to get that ball. You got to get it off quick. Back to return here for Freeport is Ben Lane and Vinny Clark. And the snap a little Whoa. low, quick to get it off the foot there. Bobbled there by Clark. Clark will fall on top of it. And a scary moment there for Freeport. That ball falls to the ground on the return. Their best offensive play was almost a punt. Coming back onto the field as Freeport kind of squandered their first possession as we have 6-16 six, left here in the first quarter. Jake, what will they do to catch momentum? Well, I think you just keep doing what you did before on that first drive. It only ended because they got that, uh, they got that flag on fourth and one. Uh, Clark would have picked up the first down, but... Instead, it was a fourth and 17, if I'm remembering correctly. What, what do we call those? Those self-inflicted wounds. It's an old uh, Coach Fabian likes to use that a lot down at Armstrong. He calls them SIWs. And uh, that'll bring us to now second down and 10 after the gain of no yards there on first down on the inside run. Fabian's such a hip guy. He's just abbreviating stuff. Hey, man. Abbreviations. It's in. I don't think it's ever been out. I'm going to call you JD from now on. <laughs> Lane in the shotgun. Two wide receivers split out to the bottom of your screen. A lone wide receiver on the top. Lane looking to throw. Surveys the field. He's going to tuck this one up to the back corner of the end zone. And he has his man, Vinny Clark, for the touchdown. Freeport able to strike first in this one to take a 6 to nothing lead. He had all day in the pocket, Jake. Yeah, no no real rush for Lane there. Just sat back and let the play develop. And that was a long developing route too, Brandon. Long uh, developing route. The ball was up in the air for a while. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that ball had some hang time. I think it was stuck in the air for about five seconds. Thought we were calling a punt for a second. So now Clark and company line up on the field to attempt the extra point. Clark with the touchdown. Now he'll attempt to feel or the extra point. That one is up, and it looked to be good from here. Good, and their arms will go up in the air, and that will be a uh, seven nothing lead now for Freeport with 5:28 left to go here in the first quarter. Three plays, I think. If that. No, two plays, actually. I was going to say, I don't know if there's a full uh, three there. Two plays to the house. I mean, Freeport lined up around the 40-yard line, so that's a 40, around a 40-yard touchdown pass there for Ben Lane. That dude punted with his arm. The Jackets will kick it off here. Once again, the man of the hour, Vinny Clark, will kick it off. Two men deep for the home team, the Vikings. Back deep is number four, Zaire Warren. And that kick taken by, look to be, 
Uh, Micah Hughes, he'll get it out to about the 34-yard line before being taken down. And this is their best starting field position of the game so far here on their third drive. We'll see what they decide to go with. I like the play calling on the last. It wasn't, if it, if it wasn't effective enough. I think it was a nice diversity. They... They stuck with their eye formation. They ran it. They did a little play action. Unfortunately, it backfired on them. And they, uh, they were like, hey, we can go in the shotgun, too. Yeah. Give Goodwin a little more time. But he'll line up under center. Eye formation once again. Tristan Goodwin, the quarterback. Two wide receivers split out to the bottom of your screen. Handoff goes to the back, and he is just swarmed immediately by a bunch of Yellow Jackets. First man there is uh, Cole Charlton. Charlton, just an athlete out there. Good basketball player as well, listed 6'3", 210. The senior laying down the hammer for the tackle for a loss there on that last play. A little bit taller than me, about 50 pounds less. I remember what it was like to be athletic. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll call it second down and 14 yards to go here for the Vikings. Douglas Insurance Services, located in Sarver next to Freeport High School, is an independent insurance agency, which means they've made available some of their best companies for your online quick quotes. Douglas Insurance Services offers personal insurance coverages to their clients in Pennsylvania, including individual annuities, boat and watercraft, auto, condo, and flood insurance. Call them today at 1 800 7 The Moth. <laughs> Just looking down at my roster, and a monster <laughs> flies in front of my face. And just, I scared me a little bit. Uh, I, I'm very professional up here, Jake. Let me tell you. We keep it. We keep it real. Um, but hey, halftime now. The marching bands are going to make their way out onto the field. Be sure to stick around for that, as we'll highlight them here during halftime. Of course, our halftime sponsor, Douglas Insurance Services. Douglas Insurance Services, located in Sarver next to Freeport High School, is an independent insurance agency, which means they have made available some of their best companies for your online quick quotes. Douglas Insurance Services offers personal insurance coverages to their clients in Pennsylvania, including individual annuities, boat and watercraft, auto insurance, condo insurance, and flood insurance. Call them today at 1-800-722-9990. Douglas Insurance Services, a proud sponsor of Freeport Athletics. But I'm going to set the microphone out the window, and we're going to hear from these two great marching bands. So stick around for the second half. Watch these marching bands do what they do. Uh, if, if my eyes, I don't think my eyes are deceiving me, but it looks like we're going to have some, looks like the, are those batons on fire, or is that just the way the light's hitting them? I mean... A couple weeks ago, we had some batons on fire. They might be on fire. Stick around and yeah, find um, out. They might be on fire. So we're going to pause here and uh, let the marching bands do their thing. The 
today at 1-800-722-9990. Douglas Insurance Services, a proud sponsor of Freeport Athletics. And welcome back everyone to High Top Sports Network, getting ready for the second half of action. I hope you all enjoyed the show of the marching band. Trying to fix our internet situation up here, but uh, I think we're doing as good as we can up here, Brandon. Sorry for the technical I mean, difficulties for all you at home watching. But uh, you know what? we got a got a hot spot, <laughs> one bar, maybe two bars. I just died a little. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we, we just went back to a red square. So Yeah, you want a green square. We're trucking it out here. Not, we, we don't have the yellow square right now. I would even – up oh, there, it's oh, orange. Or, up oh, there, it's yellow. Oh, oh, up, oh, now oh, it's red. Uh, yep. Up, yep. orange. Up, oh, yellow. Green? Go, oh, there we go. We're on blue? green. So, you know, hopefully <laughs> – uh, hopefully that might have solved our issue there. Um, Had to restart it. Didn't want to do that and lose the stream for a second. But uh, hopefully we'll be chugging along here. But I'm not going to get fooled again, Brandon. It did this to me earlier. It was green and it looked good, and then it wasn't. I thought you were going to break in the song there for a second, Jake. I was thinking about it, but uh, decided against it. That's probably wise, like copyright issues yeah. or something. I don't, know. I don't, I don't want to... Uh, don't want to burst anybody's eardrums out there with my awful <laughs> voice. I've been bursting it with my horrible chuckle and into a, a small cough. Don't don't smoke, kids. They'll do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> so the Freeport Yellow Jackets will start out with the ball. A really low scoring first half. Definitely not what I was expecting out of this game, but uh, you know, give credit to the Valley defense and also just a lot, a lot of penalties, a lot of flags on the field in that first half for Freeport. The SI dubs, you gotta imagine what's not a pleasant halftime talk. Second half, underway, and they go for the onside, onside they got it! Wow, so Freeport, you know, completely caught off guard there, Brandon. That was... Jake, I'm gonna be honest with you, that was... Lack of awareness by Freeport. They didn't even place the ball up the correct way. They s they telegraphed that uh, that onside kick, and then looking over there in the student section, there's just a pile of smoke coming out of there. <laughs> I was looking. I was like, "Are you looking at my mic?" <laughs> no, no. I'm just it's a giant cloud of smoke over the student section for. Her valley here. Kids in their vapes. I don't, I don't know. I don't get but it. Anyway, that's what I was saying. They telegraphed to their onside kick, and they caught Freeport sleeping. Um, not a good look for Freeport. Great look for Valley. We'll see how it goes. 
Tristan Goodwin and the offense back out there for the Vikings. Shotgun, he gets the snap. Going to load it up deep. Absolutely nobody Not home there. on the same page as this receiver. And you can kind of see that throw, you know, even though there wasn't a lot of pressure on that play, the pressure that he's been feeling all game long is leading to some rushed reads, some rushed throws. It's like a... That almost seemed like a wide receiver option that you would see in the, uh, the NFL. The, the receiver ran a curl, and uh, Goodwin was expecting a, a streak. That'll set up the Vikings second down and 10. Ball on the Freeport 49-yard line. I can't even tell you who I think the intended receiver was. I don't have that number in my roster. It was four. Four? Oh, that's uh, Zaire Warren, ah. the intended receiver. Goodwin once again under center. He hands it off straight up the middle, and he's going to be taken down on the play. Leaping in there was Logan Jendrajewski. Uh, I do believe Les Wilson on the carry. So that will bring us to a third down. They're going to mark no progress on the run there as it'll stay placed on the 49-yard line of Freeport. Definitely a crafty move to start the second half with an onside kick, uh, but... Can you capitalize on it if you're Valley? That's the important thing. Oh, no. And I'm, I'm going to try to zoom you guys a little closer to the action. Apologies for the camera work. I am new to this camera thing. You're doing a swell job there, Brandon? I was a radio boy, Jake. You know that. We're evolving. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> They're down in 10. Goodwin in the gun. Man in motion. That is Warren. He gets the ball. Warren trying to find a hole, but unable to get free. He'll be taken down. Uh, that might have even been for a loss on the play. But either way, it's going to bring us to fourth down. It will be a loss of two. They'll mark him back fourth and 12 now. Yeah, and, and Jake, i got to be honest. That's, that's the one thing I think I bring to the broadcast is brutal honesty. Uh, not a clean handoff. Uh, they look very hesitant every time if they want a handoff or not. And you got you to wonder if he's used to handing off to maybe one of the players that are out. This punt, a boomer. Great punt there. And a fair catch called on by Ben Lane. Uh, you know, we saw Ben Lane a lot in the first uh, quarter and half of the second quarter, but then Garrett King came in at quarterback. Uh, so Ben Lane calling for the fair catch. It'll be interesting to see who uh, Freeport decides to run out there at the QB position. I heard you say boomer. I got a little triggered, but I don't turn 30 till tomorrow, Jake. <laughs> don't don't hit me with the boomer yet. I think you're all right. Thanks. You're, you're pretty spoiled yourself. <laughs> First down and 10 here for the Freeport offense after the uh, punt on the three and out by Valley. Fun lane back at quarterback. Indeed he is. Two wide receivers split on either side. Faking the handoff. Lane's going to keep it himself. Trying to find a hole. He does. Going to carry it up past the 30-yard line, nearly to the 35. They'll mark him at the 34, but that'll be good enough for a Freeport first down. Once again, Ben Lane making a 10-yard run look very exhausting. Uh, it's like he can't decide what lane he wants to go in. But very efficient either way whether he is juking and, and spinning or going straight in a straight line during the sweeps, yeah, he is fast. Yeah, I don't think he's been brought down for a loss yet today. He's always making positive yardage out of whatever situation, Ben Lane, that is. He should have been brought down for a loss that first time he ran the ball, but got out of it. Somehow, some way. i tell you how it was. It was a legal block in the back. <laughs> 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 that that could help. Lane going to keep it again, going to try to take it up the gut. He finds a couple of yards and is able to keep the legs turning before being taken down right around the 43-yard line. And he's just, look, he has a very small hole there, one he literally had to duck to go through. I'm not even sure how that worked. Yeah, it looked like he was going to be wrapped up for a loss on the play, but able to... Trying to find the gap, churn up field. That was a good gainer. It looked, uh, looked shorter than what they marked it down on, but it's going to be second down and one now for the Yellow Jackets. Lane with the handoff up the middle. Good hole. Staying on his feet. That guy is hard to bring down. Shane Jack with the carry. Jake, I have a new element to my... My broadcasting here. I can see my breath. It's getting folly out here. 
fall weather. Folly. Folly, yeah, you know, the act of being fall. <laughs> Make up words sometimes here on high top. Autumny. Autumny? Uh, yes. There's an yes. N in there. People forget about the N in autumn sometimes. It's not real. English language is not real. First down and 10 here <laughs> for the Jackets. They try to continue marching. Stevenson goes in motion. Handoff from Lane. Once again goes to Jack. He's going to break through a tackle and be brought down uh, right at the 40-yard line. So just about a half a yard short of the first down. Give him second and one. Once again, straightforward running by Jack. He's just very decisive with what he wants to do with the football. Eight minutes to go here in quarter number three. Lane in the pistol. He gets the snap, handoff once again goes to Jack. He'll burst through the line, still on his feet. I mean, there are four or five Valley Vikings trying to bring him down on every play, but he's just able to stay on his feet, keep the legs turning, and uh, might not have been much on that play, but uh, those runs kind of wear out the defense too. Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly a small guy, Jack, and he's the kind of guy that as the game goes on, I'm going to steal a quote from out here, you don't want to hit him as the game goes later and later. Absolutely right. And as it gets colder and colder out there, the hits kind of sting a little differently whenever it's cold outside. And the run going to be stopped for a loss on the play, a big-time loss of about three yards. Zach Clark with his first carry of the game. That'll bring us to about third and 12 now for the Yellow Jackets. I take a little huddle here and discuss the game plan. 6.35 left here on the clock in the third quarter. The clock continues to wind down. A low scoring game here about halfway through the third quarter. Lane in the gun. Man, it comes in motion. That's Vinny Clark. He gets the handoff on the end around. He has room to run and gets taken down after the first down marker down at about the 24-yard line. So a new set of downs. Uh, Freeport able to convert there on third and long on the jet sweep. So one thing I noticed there was Finney Clark got the ball, no laundry on the field. Whatever they discussed at halftime so far seems to be effective. Yeah, not a penalty called on Freeport here in the second half. Really using a lot of the clock, too. Yeah, they are in. No hurry with a seven-point lead. Lane once again in the pistol. Hands the ball off to Jack. Jack will fall forward. And one of the few times he's been bottled up there, he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. No, he'll pick up a yard, so second down and nine. It seems they decided to come out and really emphasize the run game. And let me tell you, there are 12 minutes in each quarter. They've used over half. Yeah, the time of possession has just been in Freeport's favor the whole game. It, it feels like, uh, you know, not, or Valley rather, uh, doing that onside kick to start the third quarter, but unable to do anything with it. That only took about a minute off the clock uh, in the third quarter. But since then, you're right, uh, Freeport, this drive now about six minutes long. Ben Lane in the gun, Stevenson moving in motion to the top side of your screen. Lane will look to throw. Looking for Stuyvesant, but that one over top of his head. Stuyvesant did not look ready for that ball. He did not look like he was looking back towards his QB at all. Uh, whenever you have the drag route, you got to look back at your QB right away. You're usually the one belling him out. Okay, well said there, Brandon. Definitely didn't look like he got his head around to the ball in time. That'll set up a third and 11. Got to debate what you want to do here because the run game got stuffed and then you decided to go for a pass and weren't on the same page as your receiver. Well, Freeport. I'd say you got to go for a pass here, but. Yeah, we'll see. They were able to convert on a third and 12 earlier in this drive uh, with the end around. 
to Clark. We'll see what they draw up here. Third and 11 ball on the 25 yard line. Quick screen pass out there. Shaking off a tackler is Clark. He's gonna be wrapped up and taken down around the line of scrimmage. So that'll take us to fourth down and 11 and an interesting decision to be made by Freeport head coach John Gaylot. Uh, we already saw them attempt a field goal in the first half, but will they do it again here uh, with Vinny Clark, or will they decide to go for it and try to put a touchdown on the board? I'd say the big difference between first half and here in the second is probably about 10 degrees, it feels like. Um, yeah, about 10 degrees exactly. Whenever we started here, it was uh, 64 degrees. Now game time temperatures at 54. So that affects the way the ball goes through the air, especially whenever kicked. So it will be Clark to boot this one. It has a low angle and it oh. doinks off the upright just a little too far to his right there. That one had the distance. It was just a little bit further on the inside. That one would have been through. And that is, as I was say, saying, uh, the cold weather is going to affect that ball. It's going to make it more of a knuckler rather than uh, the angle that he's probably used to kicking. He's probably used to getting a little bit of a, I don't know why I'm going to the middle of the field. My apologies, folks. But he's probably used to getting a little bit of English on that ball. Not when it's cold. You're getting a knuckleball every time. Yeah, and the colder it gets, the harder that ball is, and the more it hurts the foot. <laughs> oh, it definitely hurts the foot, man. I played <laughs> soccer. So the Vikings take over first and 10 ball on their own 25-yard line after the missed field goal by Vinny Clark. Dropping back is Goodwin. I think we're going to have a little bit of smoke here. I don't know what's happening. It smells like bubble gum. I want to peek out. So now after the gain of no yards, I it'll be second down and 10 once again from the I don't 25. Know what just happened. <laughs> Me neither. It smells great. I love bubble gum. I actually think that was baby powder. It smells like baby powder now. Is it? Who knows? I wild times here. <laughs> I just saw something fly in front of us and then like a smoke come up, but it, it disappeared pretty fast. Back to the line of scrimmage for well, Valley. Like baby powder. Yeah, it was it. weird. With bubble gum and baby powder. We're yeah. just getting overwhelmed <laughs> by sense here. There's a football game we need to focus on. Tristan Goodwin in the gun. Fakes the handoff and gives it up the middle. And the ball is on the ground. For, uh, Freeport looks like they came away with it, trying to see who's at the bottom of the pile for the Jackets. And uh, looks like uh, trying to see. Uh, in the vicinity there was Gavin Crony, uh, Parker Lucas, and also Cole Charlton all around where that ball was popped out at. And now some excellent field position here for Freeport as they take over after the turnover. I mean, it looked there to me, Jake, that they were just trying a little too much, the Vikings. There was like two fake handoffs. They gave it to... Uh, Wilson, Wilson having a rough game. That's the third time put on the ground. First time actually counted as a fumble, though. Ben Lane in the pistol. Hands it off up the middle to Jack, and he has a full head of steam going forward. It's going to get a nice gain on the play, at least five yards on that first down run. Jack does not dilly-dally. He gets that ball. He sees a hole. He's full speed ahead. Yeah, the burst that he had there hitting the hole was uh, very impressive. He's the kind of back that you want on Madden. You got that 93 acceleration, you know what I'm saying? It's the whole quick. I I know you play a lot of Madden, Jake. Yeah, from time to time. Ben Lane back out there for the Jackets. Shotgun formation. Wide receivers bunched. Tighten the formation. Man in motion. And Lane will keep it. He's going to try to get the edge. He has a first down and then some, dragging defenders in. Did he make it? He did, Ben Lane with the long run. Uh, well, I guess it was about a uh, 14, 15 yard run. Looks like we got a guy down in the field. Looks like a Freeport yellow jacket. To Freeport, you would hate for that to be Ben Lane. Can't see the number. Well, I see Ben Lane walking back towards the sideline, so it's not him. 
here with the well, while we try to figure this out, we're going to take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, we'll have more action here live from uh, Valley Memorial Stadium on High Top Sports Network. For Brandon Treckengost, I'm Jake DeLuca. We'll be right back after this break. Shop and Save at Franklin Village is a family-owned, community-dedicated supermarket with a wide variety of quality food and friendly personnel to make your shopping experience easy. Stop by their award-winning butcher shop where you'll find the freshest cuts of USDA-inspected beef, pork, and poultry. Head to the bakery for the freshest bread and rolls, and don't forget to stop by the deli for an excellent selection of cold cuts, meats, cheeses, and prepared foods like their fantastic fried chicken. That's Shop and Save at Franklin Village. Douglas Insurance Services, located in Sarver next to Freeport High School, is an independent insurance agency, which means they've made available some of their best companies for your online quick quotes. Douglas Insurance Services offers personal insurance coverages to their clients in Pennsylvania, including individual annuities, boat and watercraft, auto, condo, and flood insurance. Call them today at 1 800 722 9990. Douglas Insurance Services, a proud sponsor of Freeport Athletics. Welcome back, the injured player on the field, Riley Blair for Freeport, able to make it over to the sidelines under his own power. But right now it's time to uh, see whether or not Clark can knock in this extra point. Had a pretty rough night kicking so far. Did make his other extra point. Snap is down, that one up. It looks like it's good from here, and the officials say it is good. The officials had to stare at each other a little while for that one. I was starting to wonder <laughs> if I was going to get the reverse call from two weeks ago where it looked good, and they're like, nah. Oh, yeah, that was a very strange play. <laughs> what game was that? That was Knock and Greensburg Salem? Knock and Greensburg Salem. I know this is the only game I called. Yep. <laughs> Did not have a lot of options to choose from there. <laughs> I'm back now, though, baby. Back in the saddle again with 2.53 left to go here in quarter number three. Brandon Treckengost is to my left. I'm Jake DeLuca. I'm behind you now. You just oh, took yeah, care I'm of my Yeah, I'm doing spot. a little dosy do here trying to make sure our internet's still rolling good. I we, see a, I see a green are. square. Yeah, it's been green ever since I uh, tried, to, tried a little something here. Mm. It's been working. Little, Don't want to jinx something. it. Going to uh, knock on wood here real quick. Is that wood? I don't know. It's, it's, it's wood enough. There's wood. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right, let's go. So, Vinny Clark ready to kick this one away here for Freeport. Clark getting this one away. It's going to bounce. Kick. And picking it up there uh, looks to be Zaire Warren. Warren. Trying to bounce it outside, make some people miss. Reversing field up the far sideline. He beats another man and then eventually is forced out of bounds around the 40-yard line. And this is some prime field position now for Valley. But you now they've had the ball around this area before to start drives. Just unable to move, um, move down the field. We'll see if they can rectify it here on this drive. I almost lost the camera out the window there. Hey, we kept it in? Yeah, yeah. Two minutes, 40 seconds to go here in the third. Freeport with a two touchdown lead. Vinnie I guess there's a lip flare when I've got too far. Vinny Clark scored the first touchdown for.
Freeport. Mm -hmm. Nice pass from Ben Lane. He reeled it in in the end zone, and then just now, a sky high pass. Ben Lane running it in 14 yards for the second score of the night. Back to the I formation. Toss back to the back. He's going to throw. He's going to toss it up, and that one's just intercepted easily there by Zach Clark. Clark with a lane. One man to beat. He's going to take it all the way inside the five and the end zone. Touchdown, Freeport. Zach Clark crossing the goal line on the interception. And uh, one thing that I've noticed from this Batley team, they aren't afraid to try some different things out there, some trick plays. Saw the Statue of Liberty twice in the first half. Little half and then pass. Little half, a little toss to the halfback for the pass. Just uh, Clark didn't even have to move to make a play on the ball. Mostly went into Matty. He's like, how can I make this fun to watch? He said, got a halfback pass, got the Statue of Liberty. You know what I want before this game's over? What's that? A flea flicker. Oh, man. I think you're asking for too much now. Give it to me. <laughs> Give me what I want. Two and a half minutes left to go here in quarter number three. Clark lines up for the extra point. The kick is up. And that one. Uh, no, no good. Start. Yeah, just outside that far post. It's not like we were powering up on Dragon Ball Z there. <laughs> But those tuning in didn't expect to get a little anime reference tonight. The louder you yell, the more powerful you become. Your hair also turns blonde. Never got that, but... Uh, I did once, but it was from bleach, not really from yelling. I had highlights in my hair in sixth grade. I think we all had raid. highlights in our... <laughs> like a cheetah. It was the cool thing to do. It was. Take me back to the early 2000s. Uh, simpler times, <laughs> simpler times. I had... I played. I I mentioned it a lot. I played soccer. Um, in case you didn't know, Jake, I, played I soccer. also played soccer. Yeah, hey. um, so I played with my hair a lot too. And I would have red under and black on top. So during the day, I looked normal. And for soccer, I'd spike it. And I just looked like a wild man. Wild man. You used to play for the Wild Cats. I did. Back to their existence. So old now. My high school's not even there. <laughs> Don't exist anymore. Now it's Armstrong. Armstrong Riverhawks now. And I tell you what, I'm excited to call their game because I remember that's who I called back in the day. Mm -hmm. And I just want to go, call. <laughs> the bird call. Yeah, yeah. Vinny Clark set to send this one deep. The boots. And it's go, a go wobbler. Oh. He's going to knock it out of bounds. Yeah, that was almost uh, very, that was, that was very dangerous there. Freeport was pretty much right there. I think that the Valley player on the far oh, sideline there uh, saw Freeport yeah. coming, didn't want them to pick up the ball and get possession of yeah. it, so he just batted it out of bounds. A smart play, really. Um, I do think I, – I, I was saying before halftime, I, I'd hate to be one of the Freeport players for that halftime talk, but, I mean, whatever he gave them. Whatever talk they got. Now they've been flag free Ooh. here in the second half. Flag free, motivated, looking great. Now they can't, went into the locker room at halftime, up seven to nothing. They got Michael Jordan secret stuff, man. <laughs> nothing like a little Space Jam reference. I'll hit you with every reference I can. Tristan Goodwin and the offense back out there. Goodwin in the shotgun. Two wide receivers split to the bottom of your screen. A lone wide receiver on the top. That one looks like a false start. Yep. Flag down. Yeah, Dion Lyons. Uh, just Ooh. a little too antsy on that one. This one will be coming back five yards. I haven't seen the new space, Jam Jake. I don't know if you dare or not. Does LeBron also have secret water? I, I, I don't know. I haven't watched it either. Hmm. I'll tell you what. If uh, anybody has the answer to that, leave in the comments so Jake can tell me. Now a first down and 15 ball placed on the Valley 20-yard line. After... Not what you want to see whenever you're a running team. No, you never want to see that number go beyond 10 on the yards to go. In the shotgun, Goodwin comes out there waiting for the snap. Two wide receivers split out to the bottom of your screen. Dropping back to pass, floating that one up. And that one goes out of bounds. Closest wide receiver in that vicinity was Dominic Simmons. I think right now, if you're Valley's coach, you got to pull Goodwin aside and say, hey, 
I got that extra protection there for you. You're going to have a couple of seconds. Just calm down a little. Get your feet underneath you. Then throw. Because he is releasing it like he's still getting pressure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> he he took quite he took a little bit of a beating there in the first half. Anytime that happens to you, and uh, I I mean I'm sure you know the five games prior to this he's also been under a lot of pressure. Whenever you're constantly under pressure, you sense it when it's not there. He's got the max protection now. You can see they have a person on each side of him, and they haven't been going out. They've been pretty much staying there to protect him. Good win, lofting this one up. Clark underneath a bit. Clark will take it. Vinny Clark taking this one up the sideline. Gets a block. Gets another block. Cuts it back up towards the middle of the field. And Vinny Clark in for the touchdown. So Zach Clark got the pick six uh, on the last interception during this quarter. And now uh, Vinny Clark getting the interception for a touchdown. So the two Clarks. Are they brothers? I don't think so. Oh. Tom and Lawson. Yeah, I do not believe that they are cousins, or brothers. Maybe cousins. Maybe. But hey, talented, talented pair of Clarks either way. Yeah, and just like that, we're still in the third quarter. 202 left to go here. Uh, and this game went from 7 0 to 26 0 in less than 10 minutes of game time. Man, I think it was less than five minutes. I remember not too long ago, I was saying how Freeport used to ever. Half the quarter clock, this one got a sloppy snap, but oh, that I one. think he recovered it. Yeah, that one also. No good. Wide, banged off the near side crossbar, wide left. That was a uh, that was a very low snap. That snap skipped to him, Jake. But uh, as as I was saying, I remember there was 5:30 left whenever they had their first possession. I was like, yeah, they're using up a lot of clock. We're down to 202. That's three minutes. Yeah, the game's slowing down a little bit with all these scoring plays. We we saw the clock moving, booking. And now the tortoise is trying to beat the hare. <laughs> I like that, that one. That reference worked, right? <laughs> I, I liked it. I appreciated it. Nothing like the old wise tale of the tortoise and the hare. <laughs> I, I don't know if that worked because uh, Freeport's looking pretty fast and they're technically the ones winning. You know, I saw a real life video of the tortoise versus the hare oh, the other day. Uh, the tortoise won. Oh. The rabbit just didn't have the attention span to keep running to the finish line. Well, I don't have the attention span either. It's fine. I mean, you play some nachos out there. I'm going to get distracted by the nachos. So it looks like we have a new kicker out there for Freeport. It's number 23, and I don't have that name. I don't have that number on my Freeport roster. Um, I have the same roster you do, buddy. Yeah. Well, he tried a little squib kick there. Bounced I mean, you, out of bounds. You have the roster with the updated names for a rally, at least. I'm just... My life depends on you. I got your back. <laughs> two minutes, two seconds left in the third quarter. Report leads it. 20, 27 nothing. That was 26 nothing. because he missed the extra point. It should say 26 nothing. You know, I'm going to keep my score the same here. The official scoreboard says 27, but Clark missed that extra point. It was wide off, the le off to the left. Well, he missed the one before that, too. Well, I'm trying to... Determine math and stuff. <laughs> oh, boy. So the Viking offense back out on the field after back-to-back -back possessions ending in a pick six. Zach Clark getting the first one, and then Vinny Clark getting the second. First and ten ball on the 40-yard line. That's going to be an inside run. Decent little gain on the play. It'll get him about five yards. All right, Jake, I took that time of the play to do math in my head and you're correct please keep your 26. i thought so yeah minute 37 seconds left in the third quarter now the question is now if, if we go to the final is our score the correct one or the one on the scoreboard 
That is a famous oh. Fumble on the play. Freeport saying that they got it, but a flag down on the field. Uh, it just stands. That's three straight possessions with a turnover. They they once again got cute. Um, I can't think of what that formation is called where you have double fullback. Um, jumbo, maybe. Jumbo, yeah. I think potentially. That's two tight ends. Three tight ends. Yeah, I think that's three tight ends. This is. Uh, the two fullbacks in the backfield, then your halfback, and once again, not it's it, full house. It was not it, full, that's with them on each side. Ah, this is a straight line. It's like an extended eye formation. I just can't think of the name. I'll get back. I'll I'll figure it out. I'll, <laughs> the brain's churning. Um, but once again, uh, the main point of that was just not a clean handoff, and you gotta wonder he, they've been running regular eye formation all night. Was the extra fullback confusing? Because he seemed to let it go early. So the fumble did, in fact, bounce in Freeport's favor. They'll take over on offense here. It's been a while since the Freeport offense has been out there. Lane spinning around, finding time. He's going to launch this one down the field, looking for Stevenson. Jump ball. Stevenson. Oh, no way. Um, what a catch. Whoa. That looks like. It could be anybody's ball up there, the way it was placed. But Stevenson just high-pointing it and bringing it down. It looked like he brought it down with one hand. I'm not on a broadcaster anymore, Jake. I'm a football fan, and now it's a beautiful football play. Absolutely. I mean, you saw the ball in the air. You thought to yourself, there's three rally Vikings in the area. No way this ball gets completed. But Sean Stevenson just... Uh... I can't believe what I just saw. Well, Lions need some receivers, please. Look his way. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, they put Stevenson in motion all night, and they, they've been keeping him active. That time, the big play downfield through the air, he comes down with it. 103 left to go here in the third. I mean, that was amazing. Ben Lane, delayed handoff there to Zach Clark. He's going to scurry up the field, runs through a man, and gets into the end zone. So the second touchdown of the day here for Zach Clark, one defensively, and now he gets on the board on the offensive side. And uh, I believe that is. I still think it's 32 to nothing. I. But it, it's a lot of points in less than five minutes. Yeah. A whole lot of points in less than five minutes. Uh, 20, 20, uh, 25 to be exact. Wild. Our 25, their 25. Well, if it's the official scoreboard up there, then it's 26, but I still don't think that's right. Clark out good. there to kick the extra point. That's good. He's happy to get the extra point up there. And they have 34. Well, you know what? I'm just going to stick to what they have on there. I guess. But the extra point, good. So Clark missing back-to-back uh, -back extra points, gets that one to go through. And with 55 seconds left... Can we say he missed the last extra point? How come every time I come to a football game, it turns into a simulation? Who knows? Field goals, strange or extra points, just strange things happen. Somebody call Joe. <laughs> let, let him know what I bring to games. <laughs> what a good word for me. Tom, I deserve warming, warmer clothing. <laughs> Vinny Clark back out onto the field now to kick this one off. Final minute of the third quarter. Clark boots this one away. It's a deep kick. It's going to bounce. Oh, it was going to bounce in the end zone, but it's taken there by Zaire Warren. Warren, who had a nice move. return last time. He takes it up to the 40. Cuts it back inside and eventually taken down by Zach Clark beyond the 50-yard line. Oh, he's got moves, Jake. Yeah, he showed those off in the one long return that he had. Showing him off again there on that one. This will give the Vikings the ball. First and 10. Ball spotted at the Freeport 49-yard line. Oh, the scoreboard is 33, so we were right. They changed the scoreboard here at uh, Valley Memorial Stadium back to 33 to nothing. I... So he once again missed that field goal. 
I think they gave him one when he missed one. And then we took away one whenever he made one? Hey. <laughs> the world works in a mysterious way. <laughs> Good win. Back to throw. That one low. Is that karma? Looking for Dominic Simmons on the pass there, but just too low. You can see him. He's just not a good one, just not comfortable in the pocket. I'm just trying to figure out if we got a lesson in karma today. My, my brain is frying. Hey, we're in the third quarter. I know that much. The score 33 to nothing, allegedly. <laughs> we got we got smoked out by baby powder. <laughs> yes, very, stuff earlier. Stupid, very strange stuff happening. Good win with the handoff up the middle. Is there a full moon? Uh, I don't know. I think there, the moon's behind us. There's more coming up over in Stuart's section now. I have so many questions. October's off to a wild start. <laughs> I agree with you there. So, I feel like they're going to let this clock run down so they can maybe get one more playoff here. That's clock's moving a little fast for them to get that last play. They're still in the huddle. I don't think they're going to get it. Yeah, and I don't see a play clock anywhere either, so I can't can't say how much time is left on that but Our they will real <laughs> sometimes <laughs> and that'll do it for the third quarter of action here on high top sports network freeport leads it over valley 33 to nothing uh, freeport off to a hot start to start their section schedule while we have a moment, I would like to tell you all that uh, High Top Sports Network is excited to broadcast Freeport Athletics this fall and in the future. If you or someone you know is a local business owner interested in sponsoring HTSN's coverage of Freeport Athletics now or in the future, please contact us at our email at staff at hightopsportsnetwork.com. Again, that's staff at hightopsportsnetwork.com, or you can give us a ring at 724-824-3554. You can also find us online on our website, hightopsportsnetwork.com, or on Facebook at High Top Sports, and find us on Twitter as well, our handle, at hightop underscore sports. So the final 12 minutes of action coming up here. What is going on over there? There's so much smoke or something. It is, it's baby powder. Ah. I, got them. I was going to say there's a... Uh... Yeah, yeah. They're LeBron Jamesing over there. Okay, well that's 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 better. I thought they were vaping over there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. As a play happened. Interesting. <laughs> seen it all now. I've never seen baby powder at a football game, but uh, I can't say that anymore. Yeah, yeah. I I just happened to catch a kid dumping in his hand and like do the LeBron James clap thing. I don't know if he does that anymore. I don't follow basketball. An iconic uh, pregame ritual, nevertheless. So, Valley with the football. They track back to the line of scrimmage. Third down, eight yards to go. Uh, as Tristan Goodwin is in the shotgun. Scoreboard says third. The side judge says fourth. We'll see which one it really is. Goodwin dropping back, looking to throw. He's going to lop this one deep. And there's going to be a pass interference flag. Gavin Crony in coverage for Freeport, trying to cover Zaire Warren. They get tied up, and this is going to move the ball forward for uh, the Vikings. Excuse me while Radio Boy jerks the camera to catch the action. You know, we were complimenting this Freeport team in the third quarter. No flags in that third quarter for that team uh, whenever they struggled so much with uh, penalties in the first half. Uh, big time penalty coming back there. And I mean, that's also on third or fourth down. I don't know. There's a 
a lot of things I'm not sure about right now. Uh, so definitely a, a big mistake. Right now, so definitely a, a big mistake. You just got to try to play that. If he catches it, that's a great play by him. You can't give it to him, though. So the ball will be moved up 15 yards on the pass interference call on Gavin Crony. And now Goodwin and the offense look to strike and get their first score oh. on the board with that one over the head of Goodwin. And tracking back to down him there was Colton Otterman. And uh, one step forward, two steps back. That ball will now be back to where, uh, even further back from where that uh, initial penalty uh before the penalty moved them up 15 yards, it's going to be even further back than that. Three letters, Jake. Three letters. S-I-W. Self-inflicted wound. High snap there. And now it's going to be second down in a country mile. I'll just call it second down in 24 or so. What's the difference between a country mile and a normal mile, Jake? Country mile is a little longer. Ah. I think. Allegedly. Tristan Goodwin in the gun. Three wide receivers split up top. Goodwin going to scramble out of the pocket and be taken down on the play. Sacked there by Andrew Sullivan. I, I feel bad for Goodwin, man. He, he either gets to wear the ball way too quick or just doesn't have time to go through his progressions. And Goodwin... Let me let me look at my size chart here. He's yeah, he's five eight. Listen, those and the nicest way I'd say it, little legs, man. They aren't they aren't picking up a lot of stride. He just doesn't have the speed to be running for his life. No, Freeport's pursuit was just on point. I'll set up. They say it's a third and thirty-four. So, I'm going to have to draw up a uh, big gainer of a play here. Goodwin drops back under center oh. and gets crushed again. Back-to-back -back sacks it was for Andrew draw. Sullivan. Oh. Well, they, they fooled me on that one, Brandon. <laughs> Goodwin slow to get up. Yeah, he took a lick there he by Andrew Sullivan. I, I held the camera on Goodwin. I thought he had it. And... And then I just happened to notice somebody up the field carrying the ball. I mean, great, great execution there. Uh, much better than they've been doing all game. But at what cost, man? Your quarterback just got smacked. Interesting Goodwin, the sophomore. Taking a beating out there today. So a good one out of the game, but they're going to punt it. Which kind of shocks me at this point flag and it's thrown in the area of holding ben lane he's gonna take it cutting to the sideline gonna try and turn back but he's pushed out of bounds on the play that time by chuck perkins um yeah, I, do, I i feel for a good one oh he didn't even have the ball that time he got walloped yeah yeah he's gonna be sore tomorrow that's for sure he's gonna need a chiropractor I'm going to need a chiropractor. That, sh that shot hurt me. <laughs> 8.24 remaining here in quarter number four. Freeport with the ball on offense. 33 nothing in favor of Freeport. Really woke up after halftime. One penalty after having a... I'm, I'm trying to think of a creative, let's say, a multitude of flags, but nothing clever is coming to my head. Whole slew of them. We'll go with that. <laughs> so, in the shotgun is Ben Lane, or Pistol, rather, excuse me. Man in motion is Stevenson. Handoff goes up the middle, dropping the ball there. Uh, mishap on the exchange there, but uh, Ben Lane able to fall on top of it. They're going to lose about five yards on the play, bringing us to second down and 15 to go. We're seeing some uh, some sloppy handoffs on both sides of the field. Now, you got to wonder, is the 10-degree drop affecting this? Yeah, temperature outside now, reading at 53 degrees. Brisk night here at Valley Memorial Stadium in New Kensington. 
Stuyvesant rushing out there. Looks like he's trying to get the field. He does. Won't be in motion this play. Once again, Ben Lane in the shotgun. Another bubble oh. snap. And taking it back to the house is Valley. Touchdown scored there by Jaden Richter. Ben Lane is toddling off the field, Jake. Yeah, and, and he went down awkwardly there. Um, you can see he has that right knee taped. It definitely looks like he re-aggravated it on the play there. And, uh, you know, you just hate to see that. Uh, your team has a big lead up 33 to nothing. And uh, Ben Lane, probably the last we're going to see of him uh, in this game. I mean, if I'm the coach, I'm not putting him back in. His night's done. A lot of season left, Jake. A lot of season. Yeah, and with the conference schedule just starting here for Freeport, this being their first uh, first conference game of the season here in the Allegheny 7 Conference of the Whippeal, uh, you're going to need him down the stretch. Yeah. I'm watching him over there on the sideline. He seems to be... It was not the taped up leg that he was popping off. So I don't know if that's a good sign or not, but yeah, he seems to be walking more normal now. Lining up to go for two here. They bring out uh, the big guns and fighting five. forward. Did he get there? It's hard to say. No signal yet. Going to have to peel the players off the pile. <laughs> And just short, short on the two-point conversion, so something you gotta do in high school football where they don't have a replay system. So if you're at the bottom of that pile and you know you're down, you know they gotta get people off. You still gotta score them. Oh yeah, you gotta try to wiggle forward a little bit. Good job by the Freeport defense there. Seven twenty-seven remains here in the game. Fourth quarter action here on High Top Sports Network. I'm Jake DeLuca. Brandon Treckengast. What's up? Also in the booth. That's me. I'll tell you what, Jake, it's only my second game back, but boy, does it feel great being called back at uh, Con High School football again. Oh, it's just the best. Uh, I don't think there's a uh, – I mean, high school football is the sport at its purest, in my opinion. Uh, these guys not playing for money, not playing for contracts. And it's going to be another onside kick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta love the chutzpah there. Uh, they tried to get another onside kick there. Um, the kicker didn't kick it far enough for them to try to pick it up. Uh, but I did like the gamesmanship. I didn't see the player down there, but uh, a, a Valley Viking booted the ball a little further down the field, maybe thinking the officials wouldn't see it, maybe out of frustration. But either yeah. way, uh, <laughs> that was pretty good. It was definitely, I, I mean, it, it's a moment. It's a good moment. Uh, we'll talk all about it later. Oh, absolutely. I'm still trying to find the eye formation with the two fullbacks. <laughs> <laughs> so this play moving back, uh, not sure why. It's moving, it's moving forward because they oh, kicked it again. I'm looking the wrong way here. You're right. The, the, the stick's moving forward here. I got three report on offense. I got you, Jake. And no surprise here. Garrett King in at quarterback for the Yellow Jackets. Running back is Zach Clark behind him in the pistol. I'd almost argue with Sir Manson left. You don't want him having the ball either. Zach Clark carrying the football forward. Gets a nice chunk on first down here. And uh, I think we're going to see a heavy dose of the run game here. Uh, for the remainder okay. of this game, at least on the side of Freeport. I think this might be that time you bring in that young gun you were talking about at the very beginning. I'm going to be honest, I forget his name. I'm sorry, folks. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to remember. We talked about so many different players today. and 
It's been such a wild game. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a high snap. He's going to get hit early. Yeah, Clark taken down for a loss on the play on second down and four. He'll go backwards. Call it third down and about seven yards to go here. Six and a half to go. That clock continues to wind down. I want to say it was Sean Sillinger I was talking about. What time, Slay? Yeah, the freshman quarterback for Freeport. I believe he got a little bit of game action earlier in the season. Yeah, yeah, that's who I think uh, I'm referencing. King with the handoff Ooh. being ripped down there on the play. Carrying it was Sean Stevenson. Stevenson, the meme. I think no matter what happens the rest of this game, he had to play the play of the game. Yeah, I mean, that catch on the far sideline uh, in the, or earlier in the second half was just amazing to watch. I, when that ball was in the air, we, we were talking about it when it happened. Uh, you just didn't think that uh, he was going to be able to come down with it. Three uh, Vikings were in the vicinity there, but somehow, some way, Sean Stevenson came down with that ball earlier, and uh, looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down, and uh, they're going to mark it fourth and 13. I mean, why not? King is going to have to try to escape. He gets forward a bit, but it's going to be brought down, and that'll lead us to a turnover on downs. And the Valley Vikings will take over, trailing by 27. I mean, you got five minutes left in this game, Jake. I just, uh, I mean, Val or Freeport uh, did put up all their points in five minutes, but yeah, it's been mostly off mistakes. Yeah, I mean, two touchdowns on pick sixes. Uh, another one capped off after a fumble from Valley, uh, setting Freeport up in good field position. So, uh, you know, Freeport really taking advantage of what uh, the offense is giving them here. And what did we say at the beginning of the game? Valley needs to figure out their offense. Oh, it's true. Yeah, they haven't been able to do very much at all. Their lone score coming off the scoop and score uh, oh, by Jaden Richter. So once again, it'll be Tristan Goodwin back in the gun. He'll look to throw on a slam oh, pass. That oh, ball popped up. Oh. He down with it. He did. What a play there by uh, – didn't see the number there. It looked like 18, but that can't be right because that's the quarterback. Uh, I think it's just eight. Uh, that is Xavier Wilson. And we've seen a couple circus catches now in this um, one, Brandon. Yeah, that was uh, – I mean, you you heard my professional analysis live. Oh, oh, oh. Somehow coming down with it. Sets the Vikings offense up now with a second down and five after the quick slant pass. Goodwin once again in the gun. Two backs flanking each side, or a back flanking each side, rather. Goodwin going to try and escape here, heading to the corner. Running for his life. He's going to be taken down there on the play. A uh, tackle made by Garrett King. Uh, as the night goes on, I keep wondering him if Goodwin's like, yeah, I should just stay down. <laughs> yeah, he's a little slow to get up there after that hit. And... I mean, he's been taking a lot of hits in this one. Can't blame him for being a little slow to get up there. But, hey, he's a warrior out there. He's a gridiron uh, giant staying out there, absorbing these hits and yeah, I remaining mean, on the field for his team. It's just rough seeing a, uh, a a kid, a sophomore, taking these hits repeatedly. At, at this point of the game, 3.30 left. It's it's tough. I mean. Man in motion. That's uh, Zaire Warren. And the carry goes back to the uh, original, around the original line of scrimmage, it looks like. And that'll set up for a fourth down and 10 for this Vikings offense. Three minutes and 10 seconds to go here in this game. Now, I, I'm a gamer, as I brought up earlier. There's this great system in NFL Head Coach 09. Where it was a wear and tear system. And the way Goodwin has been taking it, like his wear and tear system says, get him out of the game. Uh, live to see another day. 
Yeah, I mean, he'll be off the field now, and I would imagine that's probably going to be the last time we see the Vikings offense out there. I wouldn't imagine uh, Freeport doing anything but just running three straight plays and kind of milking this clock out for what it's worth. Yeah, and it's hard to think that uh, anybody wants to call a timeout at this point. Just let's let's survive. Fair catch. A little Stuyvesant. Caught by Sean Stuyvesant. Close a fair catch and still dodging. Yeah, yeah. Viking looked like he ran into him a little bit there, got some contact. Uh, lucky there wasn't a flag thrown. Yeah, I think since he caught it, you know, no need for a flag. If that ball pops out, I think we see some laundry on the field, but normally, keep it moving here. Normally, you know? if you touch the returner, it's a flag, but. Refs are just letting him play through how, here. How you doing? Keep it moving. That's right. So. The Yellow Jackets offense back out onto the field. First and 10, ball spotted at their own 40-yard line. King in at quarterback. He waits for the snap, gets it, hands it off to the running back. That's Ooh. Clark. Zach Clark getting up, ended there. Great tackle on the play by Micah Hughes. Great penetration. He'll lose a couple of yards. On the play, backing him up two more. Sets up for a second down and 12. I'll tell you what, <laughs> the way I'm just reacting to this, Jay, I'm, I'm just a fan tonight. This has been an old-school, hard-hitting game, and I'm appreciating it. feel a little bad for a couple of the players. It's getting a little bit more beat up than they need to, but this has been a beautiful game to watch. Absolutely. And on a beautiful night as well. Ball is here October 1st now. Weather's getting a little chilly. A little, little chilly, a little, little folly, as you said earlier. A little folly. Or a tummy. A tummy. A tummy. A, a tummy? Not one of those. Tum tum. <laughs> well, that's what, this, this, watching this old school style game makes me all like warm and buzzing my tum tum, you know? No, I feel you there. Same here, but it uh, looks like Sunny took like a timeout. Time so while we have a second, just want to thank our. Uh, loyal sponsors here. Uh, I want to say thank you to Douglas Insurance. Douglas Insurance Services, located in Sarver, next to Freeport High School, is an independent independent insurance agency, which means they have made available some of their best companies for your online quick quotes. Douglas Insurance Services offers personal insurance coverages to their clients in Pennsylvania, including individual annuities, boat and watercraft, auto insurance, condo insurance, and flood insurance. Call Douglas Insurance today at 1-800-722-9990. Douglas Insurance Services, a proud sponsor of Freeport Athletics. Appreciate our sponsors here, Hot Top Sports Network. Don't have time for the whole read, but also I'd like to thank our scoreboard sponsor, Sprankles and Saxonburg, hashtag save on meat, Steffi's Country Catering, get 10% off. Uh, your next uh, uh, when you book your next event, if you mention High Top Sports Network, they have great food, and uh, you know the Steffi family. Go, great family. I'd say go on and read what you want to. They just took a knee. Oh, they're gonna call a timeout. Well, now that we have some time, let me tell you a little more about Steffi's Country oh, tell Catering. Tell me more about Steffi's Country Catering. With over 40 years of experience, that's nothing to snop at here. Wow, scoff at rather. Uh, with over 40 years of experience, Steffi's Country Catering provides sumptuous home-cooked food served by a friendly professional staff to make your next event worry-free. Ask about their grazing tables and Brandon's favorite three-tier cheese ball mm. cakes. Be sure to order some homemade cheese balls or try their extra fresh uh, meat and cheese or pickle and olive plates. Sugar Rush Cupcakes by Tara are available by order. And be sure to check out their Facebook page for weekly Sunday takeout specials. Whether it's Friday night football tail, uh, Friday night football tailgate, a family event, or just a fantastic meal, Steffi's Country Catering has the food, has food the whole family will love. Mention High Top Sports Network to receive a special 10% discount when you book your next event. Brandon, I think that uh, this Sunday uh, we're gonna have we're gonna try out some of that excellent catering from Ooh. Steffi's. I know that they're gonna have stuffed chicken. And a whole slew of other goodies. I mean, you, when, once you mentioned stuffed chicken, you had me at yeah, hello. Yeah, I mean, stuffed chicken, you, you bring that three-tier cheese ball cake. I'm there. Steffi's Country Catering? Hey, man, 40 years experience. I turned 30 tomorrow. That is 10 more years experience than I have been alive. Yeah, 
I mean, Terry Steffi and the family know how to throw it down in the kitchen. Some cupcakes, Sugar Rush cupcakes by Terry. Can't go wrong there. I mean, if you don't want to cook, call Steffi's Country Catering. If you want to cook, get some great deals down at Sprankle's Neighborhood Market. You can't go wrong with either. Hashtag. Save on meat, baby. 121 left in this ball game. All but over at this point. And uh, while we have a second here, Brandon, who do you think is uh, most deserving tonight of the High Top Sports Network player of the game? Oh, man, we have options. We certainly do. We have Mr. Lane. We got the man who just kicked the punt there, Vinny. Returning that one, Darnell Coaston. We got uh, Zach. We, we got both Clarks. Zach and Vinny both a having case. a good game. Ben Lane had a good game. Um, I think the name we said the most tonight, though, would be Vinny Clark. Yeah, Vinny Clark with a touchdown on the offensive side, a touchdown on the defensive side off of a pick six. Had a had to return for a touchdown, got called back. Yeah, he was all over the field. I think you're exactly right, Vinny Clark, the High Top Sports Network player of the game, and I mean the play of the game. I think that's an obvious one for both right of us. Yeah. Stevenson's uh, catch on the sideline in the third quarter. If uh, what? Who was it that caught that? Uh, Wilson, Xavier Wilson. If, he, if his ball was a little bit further down the field, I'd say he would be a good contender. But because he he had the the triple whoop there, yeah, just juggling it. But Stevenson just one hand. Honestly, I thought it was going to be picked. Yeah, I, three Valley Vikings in the area. I've turned into a football fan since that moment where I've just been reacting to every play. It's been an Whoa. entertaining one tonight. Wow. And you know what? Oh. What, what was a seven to nothing halftime score? blossomed into this just dominating performance by Freeport and it could be even even an even bigger lead uh if those touchdowns in the first half didn't get called back because of penalties SI dubs the uh the scoreboard certainly as per usual does not tell the full story Jake I mean these Valley Vikings they fought they clawed they looked excellent especially in the first half um, just kind of a rough third quarter, if we're being honest. You clean up that third quarter, I think we still have a touchdown apart game. Yeah, you, you really saw kind of Valley falling apart after that first touchdown was scored in the second half or in the third quarter. Valley's got a young team. Good, good one's only a sophomore. He's only a sophomore. He's taking a lot of hits. He's had a rough season. Uh, he's been chased down a lot, uh, running for his life out there. I think he's going to learn. He's going to come back stronger and ever next week and especially this years to come. Yeah, and a lot of these players are going to be coming back next year for this Valley team. Certainly they have a number of seniors, uh, but they have a lot of youthful players as well. Uh, you know, you mentioned the quarterback, Tristan Goodwin, for them only a sophomore. Uh, their biggest offensive lineman, 6'4", 300 pounds, Dominic Seibert, uh, only a sophomore as well. You know, so he'll have him protecting his blind side. Uh, throughout his career here. Yeah. Took a shot down the field. We got a flag on the play, so there's 58 seconds left. Um, third and 15. I, tell you, I, so. I think you get some coaching some coaching behind Cyber. That 6'4", 300-pound lineman, he'll be blocking two, three people by himself. Yeah, I'm very excited to see uh, what those two players in particular are going to look like by the time they're seniors. Oh, man. A little... A little muscle on over the years and learn them up. Yeah, got some great players. Absolutely. Uh, Freeport. Also, a lot, a lot of talented players there. Um, I feel like they, they have a little bit more experience behind them, a little bit more age. Yeah, Xavier Wilson, another player that we uh, called out a lot tonight, uh, called his name out a lot tonight. Mm -hmm. He's He's only a junior, so he'll be back next year as well. Uh, Zaire Warren, a guy that we talked about a lot, one of those seniors on the team. So he will certainly be missed next year. But uh, a lot of things to look forward to if you're a Valley fan. Uh, a lot of players that you can see the potential. You can see the potential yeah. on the field. Oh, that was a... Oh, ball oh. dropped. He's able to dive back on top of it. That was a, that was a tough, 
toss. Um, what happened there? Goodwin, a little bit behind his halfback. You got to get that in front of him so he can pick up his speed as he's about to bring it in. He had to adjust. The cold weather makes that ball hard to hold on to. Just dropped it. Yeah, the fingers get cold. They don't move as well. Hands get tight. Ball feels a lot harder. Yes, that too. But this clock... I believe they're just going to let it run out. They might try one more play I think play they're going to try one more play. A little, little pride play here for Goodwin and this team. And marking it second down and 15. Thought it was third down. Not the case. Goodwin dropping back. He's, He's going to air, air it. Out. Oh. Underneath of it, catching the interception there. One more Brady. pick. Brady Sullivan. Three interceptions for this Freeport defense here tonight. Two of them returned for a touchdown. And also, they forced a fumble and recovered it. Well, uh, So four turnovers uh, for Freeport. They'll finish with a plus three turnover uh, differential. Not a bad day at the office. Uh, yeah, really, really swerving that uh, camera around, Jake. I had my hands in my pockets. My hands were getting a little cold when I went to it. Um, but he, he took a shot. I mean... We got two seconds left. Let's just run them off, you know. Yeah, I don't. I mean, hey, you know, maybe you take one more shot here. Dude, dude, the respectful thing is taking me. Oh, that's right. Freeport, just Freeport got, the got the ball. Yep. I was like, wait a minute. I was confused there no, for a second. Let's, let's, I don't think that they're gonna throw a bomb here. Not I, I think that they're going. I think they're gonna just kneel it down. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. Uh, I'm gonna agree with your play call now. I don't think that Yellow Jackets head coach. Uh, John Gaylot would want to rub any salt in the wounds. What, is, what does he have on his back? Uh, I have no idea. But that'll do it here. Uh, Freeport exploding in the third period or third quarter. Called so much hockey this past week. I'm <laughs> called the third period. Uh, the third quarter just exploding on offense, putting up 26 points. Within five minutes, like you said before, uh, just a great showing for Freeport. This will move them to two and three, uh, and this will drop uh, the the Vikings down to zero and six. So Freeport starting off their uh, conference schedule with a win. It's always a good good feeling. And if, if you are Freeport, you just you said it exactly right. Freeport is two and three, Jake, but they are one and zero in conference, and that is the number that really matters. Yeah, and that one and three record is a little deceiving. You know, they played uh, Avonworth and then Sarah Catholic. Uh, those are two powerhouse teams, and they held much, their own in both of those bigger, games. Schools. Yeah, they, they held their own in both of those um, games. Armstrong also, but yeah, they're other well. too. They are a bigger school, Armstrong. Um, we're, we're on the team there. Uh, this has been a, a, a very fun game to watch, a very fun game to call along with you, Jake. Uh, once again, I appreciate you bringing me onto the team. Uh, this this has been excellent. I've, I've had a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been a great game. We saw saw a lot of interesting things here at the <laughs> Valley Memorial Stadium. Uh, but it was also a very entertaining game. Uh, hats off to Valley for keeping it so close through that first half. But, you know, if that five-minute span uh, didn't happen for Freeport, we'd be having a different conversation about this game. We um, could see overtime right now. Could. It would be possible. But, uh, yeah, that'll just about wrap it up here. For us at High Top Sports Network, check us out online, hightopsportsnetwork.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up to date with all the things happening. And if you enjoy what you see, if you enjoy what you're listening to, uh, feel free to click that donate button. We appreciate uh, any amount that you can uh, donate. Uh, it helps us keep expanding, growing, making this a better product. So we thank you all for watching. We want to thank all of our sponsors from Sprankles Neighborhood Market, Douglas Insurance, uh, BS Outfitters, and Steffi's Country Catering uh, for helping us provide this game tonight. But, uh, Brandon, any closing thoughts before we sign off here? Of course, we also got to thank you, the fans, the people who listen. And uh, I think that's about it. I mean, great game back next week. We have a few games next week. Yeah. Some, some games next week. Uh, you can check out our schedule. We have our full October schedule out and available uh, on HighTopSportsNetwork.com. Click on that More page, uh, the More tab, rather, and check it out. You'll never know what you'll see. Uh, we're out there basically every day 
covering games, sometimes multiple games. Like tonight we had four football games. Uh, you can check those out. All of our broadcasts are available to watch on our website. So check that out. Uh, it's free. If you missed a game, you want to see one that happened tonight, mytopsportsnetwork.com. But that'll just about do, us, uh, do it here for us. Uh, live from New Kensington at the Valley Memorial Stadium. For Brandon Treckengost, I'm Jake DeLuca. We'll see you next time.